All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about purchase discounts a little bit more, which is what we just finished in the last lesson. But we're gonna talk about the two different methods that we are going to book those transactions into our book. So when we buy product to, from our vendor, there's actually two ways that we can actually report that on our books based on whether or not we are going to take advantage of the discount or not. And that's gonna basically detail which method we're going to use. So let's get started here with understanding purchase discounts and method of reporting those credit terms in our books. Now, a customer technically has two ways of reporting amounts uh, due for purchases they have made and received credit from. The first method is what we call the gross method. The second method is the net method. So we've got the gross method and net method. Now, let's talk a little bit about the gross method and when we would use that. So the gross method, this is used when company reports the expected amount due, assuming that the discount will not be taken. So maybe it's just policy that the company just waits till when the invoice is due to be able to pay the invoice rather than actually taking advantage of the discount. Well, if that's the case, if they don't expect to take the discount, then they should report how much is owed based on them not taking the discount. So this is what it kind of looks like from a journal entry standpoint. So when the goods are received, they're gonna debit the inventory and credit for the credit accounts payable for the amount that they expect to pay. So no net, just whatever they're gonna pay without the discount, that's what they're gonna book, debit inventory, credit accounts payable. Now, if they pay within the discount period, so let's just say, look, they don't usually take the discount period, but this time they are. If they do, then their journal entry is gonna look something like this. They're gonna debit accounts payable for the total amount that they were expected to owe. They're gonna credit cash for the amount that they actually paid, which will be different from the amount that they were expected to owe and they are going to reduce inventory by that purchase discount amount. So um, in our last lesson, we talked about we buy something for $1,000, we get a 2% discount, and so our discount's $20. So this journal entry would be debit accounts payable for $1,000, how much we owed, credit cash for 980, how much we're actually going to pay, and then the $20 discount for paying within 10 days, we're gonna credit inventory for $20. So that's what it would look like if we pay, happen to pay within the discount period. Now if we don't, it's just gonna be as simple, we're gonna reduce cash for the $1,000, and we're gonna reduce the accounts payable by the amount that we initially owed, which was also $1,000. So again, uh, really for the gross method, most of the time this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen and this one here is usually a little bit rarer. That's why they're going with the gross method. The gross method is also a little bit easier to understand because it's actually logistically giving you everything that's happening and not considering the discounts being taken until you've actually taken the discount. Now, the other method method is the net method. Company reports the expected amount due assuming they will take the discount. So in this case, they're just going to assume they're going to take the discount. So they're going to report the inventory at its discounted amount, and they're going to report how much is owed to the vendor at its discounted amount. So we would get something like this. When the goods are received, they're going to debit inventory and credit accounts payable. But the difference between this one and the last one is this number is going to reflect the discount. So in our case, it would be $980. $1,000 minus 2% would give us 980. So that 980 would be what we would report on how much we owed and how much our inventory is worth. Now, if we pay within the discount period, then we have no adjustment because we've already adjusted for the discount. So we're simply going to pay the 980 by crediting cash and we're going to debit the accounts payable for 980 to reduce the liability, the amount that we owe to our vendor. So in this case, we're good. We're done. Now, if we don't take advantage of the discount, then we have to think a little harder on how this all impacts. Since we didn't report the inventory at its true cost, we reported it at a reduced cost based on what we expected the discount to be taken, we now need to write up that amount that we're paying. So in this case, we're gonna debit the accounts payable for the amount that we were 
owed or we were supposed to owe. We're also going to debit interest expense for the $20 and credit cash for the $1,000. Now, in this case, some people would go, why would we debit interest expense? Well, technically, you should have paid $980. You decided to extend how much you owed by 20 days instead of paying within that first 10 days. You waited the 30 days to pay. As such, we're going to reduce we're gonna charge you interest expense. So it's basically you're borrowing money for another 20 days because you're not willing to pay off the balance right away. So in this case, we're gonna debit interest expense for $20 because that's theoretically what it is from um, a theoretical standpoint. When you really think about it, you're delaying the payment because you don't have, a, you can't pay it, therefore it's interest expense. So we will debit interest expense for that discount that we didn't take. Now, unless otherwise told, you're going to use the gross method because the gross method makes the most sense and it's usually the easy one. But again, we're trying to show you that there's two different methods. You should know the gross method. The net method you should understand, but if you're doing any assignments or any work, you should be using the gross method. So that is a look at purchase discounts using the credit terms. In the next lesson, we're going to look at it from a vendor standpoint. So we're going to look at it from the opposite side and help you understand what those general journal entries are going to look like. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.